Hey, what's up everybody? You're about to watch a message I just finished preaching called Prepare the Way. Uh, I pray that this message finds you. I pray this message is encouraging to you. And uh, I pray that it does something for your life. And hey, if it does change you, impact you, I would love to hear uh, your story. Simply shoot me an email at info at the warehouse dot church. And uh, I would love, I would love to read that. Uh, hey, and if you're within 35, 40 minutes of our church, we have church every Sunday, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And there's nothing quite like being in church. And uh, let this be the personal invitation for you to come join us right here at the Warehouse Church. Hey, I hope this message blesses you. Have a great week. And I hope to see you soon right here at the Warehouse Church. God bless you. I'm going to go to Mark chapter 1 first. Mark chapter 1. This is referencing Isaiah 40, which I probably won't read uh, at the 9 a.m. But Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 1, says this. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah, the prophet. uh, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. So John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem, they went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Verse six, John wore clothing. This is for people who judge how I dress. Just think of John the Baptist. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I for the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and and untie. For I baptize you with water, but he he will appear and baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let me go to Malachi, Malachi chapter three, uh, verse number one says, I will send my, this is Malachi, which is the last book of the old Testament. So this book, uh, and Malachi's prophecy was 500 years prior to John the Baptist coming on the scene. So you think you have to wait a long time. Malachi has this, this vision from God. He's a prophet of God. And he says, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me then suddenly the lord you are seeking will come to his temple the messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come says the lord almighty but who can endure the day of his coming who can stand when he appears for he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver he will purify the levites and refine them like gold and silver then the lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness and the offerings of judah and jerusalem will be acceptable to the lord as in the days gone by as in former years and so malachi was prophesying that there was a messenger coming there was a savior coming and then we pick it up in mark chapter one actually john the baptist comes on the scene let's pray father we thank you for the bible we thank you lord how every single it is not a fairy tale it is not a book of collective things that somebody made up this is the true living word of god every word in it is real every word in it is true there is no falseness in this book so father everything fits together perfectly pointing one big honking neon sign to the coming of jesus christ and so lord we thank you for this book Our church is built and rooted in this book, on this book. So Father, I pray as we get into your word today that you would make it come alive inside of our hearts, that you would have us gain fresh insight and fresh revelation to just what part we play in preparing for the next coming of Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we thank you today. God, we pray, Lord, no matter what somebody's walked through, Lord, that today they would simply simply hear and feel your presence that we would it would be impossible to leave this room the same way we entered it but god we would leave changed empowered transformed by the power of your word and the holy spirit and it's in jesus name i ask it and everybody says amen amen if you're taking notes i've tagged this message prepare the way prepare the way 
The Bible in 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 10 talks about uh, we will all at one time, we will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So when our life is gone, when our life is finished, we will at one time, we will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And so I've, I've got wrote down, if you're wise, I think it will be important for us to live each day with this truth as the center focus of our mind. Like, we're not just going through life to go through life. We're going through life to prepare the way for the coming king. We're going through the, our life to prepare the way for others to experience the same grace we've experienced. I, I believe if we could capture what God's purpose for our life is, I, I think, let me, let me just say it this way. I think it's good if we would adopt a preparation perspective for our life. Like a perspective of preparing for, a lot of times we don't prepare for something until it's too late to prepare for something. Like you, you're, you, if you clean your house and keep your house clean, you don't got to clean your house when the doorbell rings. But how many people know when the doorbell rings, you're shoving underwear in the oven, you got, go check the toilets, make sure they're flushed clean them, throw some blue stuff in them, just make it look like it's good. Because you ain't got a preparation perspective. Because if you, I, I, like, I like to say it this way, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Christian person, if you just stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And I think a lot of times in our Christian faith, we wait until it's too long to prepare. All, all the while, if you're parenting the right way, bringing your kids to church, sure, hell might visit your door, but you've prepared your kids, you've prepared your minds, you've prepared your hearts, and you've heard enough sermons from me or heard enough worship songs from our team that, wait a minute, I'm going through something, but this something doesn't mean it's the everything. Like, I know that if I'm, a, if I'm in a valley, pastor talks about valleys, but he often follows it up by talking about mountaintops. He talks about bad times, but oftentimes he talks about good times. And if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. It's all about having the preparation perspective. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you keep your house clean, then you're ready for the guest. A lot of times we don't welcome Jesus into our life because our heart's not clean. And Jesus, he knows that we're not perfect. He knows that we're not clean. And a lot of, a lot of the, the feelings that you and I have sometimes is, man, I've got a lot of shame and a lot of guilt and a, a, lot, of, a lot of regret. And you, you feel like you haven't made room or prepared your heart to receive King Jesus. But Jesus is the occupier of my life. He, he's, the, he, he's, the, he's the leader of my soul. He resides in me when I'm living right and when I struggle to do right. God never changes in my life. Are you following me? And so don't let the devil talk you out of trying to do right and make, and make a place for God. You did right today by coming to church. Like you don't even know it, but you're preparing yourself for God to do something greater in your life. A lot of the times people experience miracles from Jesus because they made it into the room where he was. I think it's important to be in the presence of Jesus. I think it's important, that's why church is important. Can you have church at home? Sure, we have hundreds of people that are plugged in on Warehouse Nation that call this church their home. And so, yes, you can have a home church and, be, and, 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 and you can be successful, but, but you also need community. You also need friends. You all, you, I feel like you need a shoulder to cry on. That's why Pastor Matt does a phenomenal job with our Warehouse Nation that they have Zoom groups and he calls and he texts and he pastors his people. It's a beautiful thing to watch. All I'm trying to tell you is that there are some things that you have to prepare yourself for even coming to church and worship. You know why we worship? Because we're preparing for God to do something significant in your heart. Worship is, is the, is goes before the battle. It's softening your heart. That's why we praise and get excited because we're celebrating and then we slow it down and we get into a, a more worshipful song which says, man, God, you are so good. God, you are so holy. And the moment of worship is when God comes and starts working on the heart of men and women across this room. Why? Because we're preparing the way for God to do something significant in our life. We prepare for a lot of things. I got wrote down, failing to prepare is to not prepare at all. Hard work is involved when you prepare for what's coming. Like Christian faith is not easy. It's called preparation. You gotta come to church when you don't feel like it. 
You gotta give when it hurts. You gotta praise when you don't feel like it. You gotta serve when you don't feel like it. But it's preparing you for what's to come. And so in biblical times, I love this, I studied this week, in biblical times, thousands of workers, thousands of people would, would go ahead and prepare the way before the king traveled anywhere, from palace to the city, from palace to another palace. From, he, the, the people would go before the king, and, they would, and they, would, they would fan out across the countryside, removing debris from the road, sprucing up the public buildings, putting new mulch in, in, the, on, on, you know, in, the, in the landscaping. They would, get, they would, they would make sure there's no potholes in Parkersburg praise God they they would go up they would they would go before making sure everything would be at its very best for when the king passed by to see can I tell you the great honor that you and I have today is the same honor John the Baptist had back then John the Baptist was preparing the people for the first coming of the king do you understand the magnitude of, of a call of God has on his church like the same call John the Baptist had came out wearing camel's clothes, eating locusts covered with honey, saying they prepare because the Lord is coming, is the same call you have on your life. Our, our, our call is a little bit different than John. Jesus has came and gone, but we're one of these people that believe that he's coming back again. So everything we do on the weekend is so we can prepare the way for the king to come again. In your life, you go to work and be a witness. So not that you can be viewed as a good Christian person. No, you're going there so you can prepare the way so somebody else can get on the path you're on and find the same Jesus you found and the same grace you found and the same love you found. We get to prepare the way how amazing is that how humbling is that that the call placed not on it's not just my call it's on your life Gary it's on your life in your life in your life that the burden we have to carry is actually a blessing it's to prepare the way for others to find the same God we found we prepare for guests coming over we prepare for dinner we prepare for work, some of us. We prepare for vacation. We prepare for, for birthdays. We prepare for Christmas. We prepare for dates. Uh, we, we prepare for a lot of things. We even prepare to go to the DMV. Right? But what we fail oftentimes too much as a Christian person, we fail to make room for the king. Like this Christmas season is more than just coming to church and singing great Christmas songs and hearing a great Christmas message in a few days. No, no, our, our, call, our call is to make room for the king, to go ahead of the king and to clear out the debris and to make sure the roads are nice and to make sure the landscaping looks good and to make sure that there's no hiccups on the journey. In other words, we're making room for people out there to come and experience the king in here. So we have to learn to prepare the way. I got wrote down, it's important that you prepare yourself before preparing others. How can you introduce Jesus when you don't know Jesus? And if you don't know Jesus, the last thing you want to do is Give Jesus to somebody else because your version of Jesus doesn't match the Bible's version of Jesus. And that's why we have so many Christian people confused about who Jesus is. Because we have some people living a lifestyle outside of the will of God claiming that Jesus is, is, saved them and loved them. And he did save you and he does love you. But it does not condone the relationship that you're currently in or the lifestyle that you're currently living. And so be, be, be very careful that you don't prostitute Jesus' name just to make yourself feel better for the life that you're currently living. Our job, I'm preaching today, our job is not to prepare the way so that everyone cannot change. No, following Jesus costs you everything. Like if you, if you can get saved and stay living in sin, I'll probably tell you, you may not have got truly saved. Because if you understand that Jesus died for you, he came for you, he gave everything for you, he laid his life down for you, he shed his blood for you, he overcame death, hell, and a grave for you, and if you get saved, you should not come up out of the place of death looking the same way you went in the grave. You should come out alive. You should come out free. You should come out wanting to do right. So we got to learn to prepare the way. 
So it's important, like, no, no judgment from the pulpit today, but I would encourage you that if your life is not right with Jesus, make sure you make it right today. We don't got a day to wait. You don't, you, we're not promised another moment on this earth. So my, my whole call in my life is I want to make sure that the message of God and the message of hope goes forward so that whoever hears the message, I don't care what you got going on, what lifestyle you got, how much sin you got, what kind of past you got, that you got the same opportunity that people have that don't sin like you, don't look like you, don't talk like you. The ground at the foot of the cross is level. Prepare yourself before preparing others. The Bible at its core, like he, he came to be our salvation. Like, like when you got to think of the baby, baby Jesus, when, when baby Je- like he, he came, he, he, he came not like a king. He didn't come riding in on a chariot. No, he, he was born humbly. He, he was born lowly. He was born in the, in the back alley. He, he was born in the darkest of nights, but yet he was still king laying in the, he didn't change. And he came, his whole mission was, was salvation. His whole mission was your life. His whole mission was if nobody else was here, Casey, but you, he would still do what he did because your life mattered. And so he came so we could, we could be saved, but not just so we could be saved and not changed. He came so we could be saved and to change and go prepare the way for others that experience the same level of grace and forgiveness that you experience. Salvation, what does salvation mean? I got some definitions wrote down. Rescued from some impending disaster. I mean, people know he, he rescued you when he saved you from an impending disaster called hell. Salvation means to save from defeat in battle. When you're saved, you're victorious, baby. Like, like, like when, he, when, he, when you experience salvation, you, 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 may face, you may face a fight, but the battle's already been won. Like when you know that you've been saved, yeah, you're going to face some fights and it's, or it may be a 12 round fight, but the boxing match has already been decided. The judge already knows who's going to win the fight. Like if you're saved, you, you, you win, you're undefeated. You, 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 you are, you are saved from an impending disaster. How about this one? You are saved from a life threatening disease. Well, I ain't got no life. Yeah, we all have a life threatening disease. It's called sin. Selfishness in nature sin always wants you to do what you want to do so we all have this 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 life-threatening disease that jesus came uh to pull us out of the ultimate meaning of salvation is being rescued from the wrath of god it's free it's a free gift it's a free gift that we that we must receive in full so 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 the gospel the gospel the gospel the good news uh, there, there's a lot of times you, 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 you know, you ever, you ever talk to your wife and she says, do you want the good news or the bad news first? See, the beautiful thing, like this, there is, there is, there is, there is virtually no bad news in the book. Like it's, it's a good, it, it's, it's a, it's good news. Now there are, it is bad news for people who don't, who don't bow a knee on this earth to King Jesus. Like let, this is not a fairy tale people. Like this book is 100% true. It's good news. It's not a judgment book. It, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't divide. It's not divisive. It's not hate speech. No, this is good. This is good news. It's good news for Christian people. It's good news for saved people. Not so, n- not so good news for people who don't want to confess Jesus as their Savior and you, and you leave this world before surrendering your heart. Bad news because there is a place called hell that people will live in. God doesn't send anybody to hell. People send themselves to hell. So let's, 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 let's kill that narrative. Like God is, is a God of love. God is a just God. God is savage, by the way. Thank God he sent Jesus. God is a wrathful God. God's full of wrath, but also God's full of love. And so, so this book, the gospel, is good news. And it's, there's really no bad news, but I got right down. It's like the doctor who took his patient into a room and said, I have some good news, and I've got some bad news. The patient said, well, give me the good news first. Well... The doctor said they're about to name a brand new incurable disease after you. (laughs) As good as it gets today. (laughs) Or how about the story of of Susan who phoned her husband at work for a a quick chat and he said, I'm sorry, sweetie, Uh, I'm really covered up today. I don't don't have time to talk. And 
So she replied, but I've got some good news and I've got some bad news for you. Okay, he said, but could you just give me the good news right now? Okay, she said, well, you'll be happy to know that the airbags in our brand new car work perfectly. <laughs> How many husbands been in that, that phone conversation before? So the gospel, it brings us good news because why? We need it. How many people need good news today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need, we need good news. Jesus once said that he came t- to give us life and life to the fullest, meaning life filled with purpose. Why do we, why do we need good news? Because on our own, we're going to fall into sin. Like on our, on our own, we'll talk ourselves out of everything God wants to bring us into. Like on our own, we, we, we can't make it through a day. Uh, on our own, like we're kind of like sheep. When we've gone astray, like we just keep wondering and wondering and wondering. That's why we need a shepherd with a big hook that when we, when we get out of line, when we try to go to the other pasture, he scoops us up and pulls us right back into the fold. He keeps us fenced in. He leads us beside still waters. He makes sure we're in a place where we can eat good grass. Why, why do we need good news? Because we have this thing called sin and temptation is trying to wreck our entire life and Jesus had someone who preceded him who set the table for his ministry and likewise now he has the church to set the table for his second coming to redeem the church how powerful is that revelation John the Baptist wild eyed crazy hair camel camel cloak wearing leather belt strapping Locust eating, honey dripping off his beard, crazy. And that's who Jesus chose to to prepare the way. So the next time you say, well, how can God use me? I want you to say, well, if God could use John the Baptist, he can probably use me. As crazy as I dress, I look like a Southern Baptist deacon today behind this pulpit. (laughs) Holla at your boy, somebody. <laughs> but I, I, think it's, I, think, I think there's so much to this story that I, I, I think if you really dive into it in today's culture, I think sometimes we make it so much about what people ha- dress, how they are on the outside. In reality, like Jesus chose, God chose John the Baptist to come out of the wilderness. I mean, not having a bath in decades like locust not only eating and growing in his beard so if he got hungry he just plucked one out and ate it but now god can't use you you got sin in your life god can't use you you you, you don't you, you don't god, god can't use you you got that thing in your past nah if god can use john the baptist god can use you See, the, th- the thing with American church, the thing with Christian people is we often think the thing that disqualifies us to God is actually the thing that qualifies us. The thing that we write ourselves off is what God used to write ourselves in. Because God knows the only way to broken people is to prepare the way for broken people. And so if we're huffy and stuffy in church thinking we're too good and we're too, we're too, we're too high and mighty and we're too spiritual, don't get close to me, then we've, we've missed the point of preparing the way. The beautiful thing about Christianity and the beautiful thing about church is when you and I catch the revelation that we don't deserve the grace that we got in the first place. If we could just gain the revelation today that, man, I didn't deserve it, but God gave it, then you start looking at people who you used to judge and think, wait a minute, how dare I judge that woman when my life isn't perfect? Let me prepare the way for you, sweetie. Let me prepare the way for you, dude, because I got some issues too. I got some struggles too. And if God can use it for me, God can use it for you. Right? And so oftentimes we, we write ourselves off. A lot of times we're, we're our own worst critic. And there are some things that you do that nobody knows. And there are some things that you've walked out of that nobody knows you were in. And that's the amazing thing about God. Like, like that doesn't mean you're not in. That doesn't mean that God can't use you. Like what I love about our church is God is using all types of people. Oh, you pastor the young church. Man, I'm 42 in January. I'm not young. And no, we're not young. Like, I don't want to be young. Young people are broke. Young people are selfish. And young people, all they do is take selfies all the time. And like my daughter sends pictures and it's only of her eyes up. Like, what are you teenagers doing? Like, what's wrong with the rest of your face? 
Your right eye, really? I don't want to build a church on young people. I'll retire and sell cars at Astor tomorrow. But do we have young people? Yeah, because how many parents know they need Jesus? Right? And so a lot of times what I love about our church is that God is using all types of people. Not just young people, not just old people, not just middle, like it's everybody. I've always thought like the beautiful thing about a church is if it's multi-generational. Because there are things that people will walk through that I haven't walked through that can help me and counsel me and say, hey, be, be, be prepared for this or hey, watch out for that. And hey, I've been married 48 years. You better, you better make sure you do this for her on this day. And thank you, Pastor John. I needed that encouragement that day. So the beautiful thing, and sometimes the older generation need, needs the, 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 just the, the energy of the youth. Because man, ah, yo, you can keep, because what, what, what I know is when I watch young people worship, like, it motivates me. Like, man, look how much passion they got, how much zeal. Like, man, they're just, they have, they have, they have they're just, what, it just gives me energy. A lot of people say, man, I love how you preach with such passion. Well, it just doesn't come, it just, it's just what's in me. And so part of the reason I'm so passionate is because I know where I came from. And so if my passion can get off on you, then you go to your work and be passionate because you're called and you're qualified and you can make a difference. And now you don't have to just have a microphone to preach. No, you've got a life to live. God wants to use you where you are. Prepare the way. Prepare the way. Prepare the way for the same God you found. Let's let other people find him. I didn't think I'd preach today, but I'm preaching for some reason. Write this down. Understand God's chose you. And if he's chosen you, you ain't got a say in it. You can be like Jonah and run, be in the belly of a whale for a few days if you want, but eventually you're going to do what he said to do. How about just skipping the whale and skipping the run and just say, God, here I am, use me. Because if he's chosen you, you're, you're going to get there eventually. And I find it really encouraging that, that if he chooses you, See, the encouraging thing to me was when, when he called me and chose me, I didn't compare myself to like Jensen Franklin. I didn't compare myself to Bishop Jakes. I compared myself to the 12 jokers he decided to call his disciples because they was jacked up. They were fishermen. They cussed. They had problems. They were tax collectors. They were, they, they were greedy. Like, like they, 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 they had, that's who I want to, I, I want to compare myself to who Jesus chose when he first started his ministry. Right? So the, see, the danger is when God calls you, you're going to think, well, man, no, I've, I've got too many things in my life or I've got some things. You're comparing yourself to the wrong person. Compare yourself to the person in the mirror. Like when you know God's called you, he didn't call you to be like somebody else. He called you to be you. He called you to go and he called you to prepare the way that only you could prepare. Like that's the beautiful thing about God is, is that he called you. And if you're ever discouraged, just get yourself a mirror and look in and say, man, you know, I, I'm not doing too bad. Because I used to do, I used to be, I used to say, I used to struggle with that. And all of a sudden, you can remind yourself about all the things God has done back there. So when you feel discouraged up here, God's still choosing you. God has still chosen you. It doesn't change because you find yourself in a tight spot or in a valley that's low. No, he still has his eye on you. He still wants you to prepare the way. You still have a story to tell. You have a testimony to share. You got people to reach. You got loved ones to invite. Come on, you can make a difference and you are chosen just the way you are. Prepare the way, prepare the way. I, I think sometimes we can prepare the way for the king by praying. Like, like by, you know, when you start off the day, like you gotta you got have, got have a prayer time. Like it's important to pray. It's important to pray. Like every, every day, praying is, praying is important. Like if you're called by God and you wanna help prepare the way, then develop a prayer time. Like not just selfishly praying for you, but pray for others, pray for opportunities. Like, like pray for our city, pray for your marriage, pray for your family. Like there are so much stuff that you can do to help yourself be ready for when Jesus comes. So like my, my prayer is, God, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna feel you every day of my life. I wanna experience you every day of my life. I want you to protect my family. I want you to protect my parents. I want you to, to make a way. I want you to bless our church. I want you to open up doors for our ministry. I pray for that family. I pray for that sickness. I, I pray every 
day of my life, I'm preparing for the coming king by getting, setting apart of some of my schedule to not just pray just nonchalantly, but diligently seeking the face of God. And we need more prayer. Like prayer is, prayer is something that we need as individuals, also corporately. Like why do we pray two or three times a service? Because it's important. Like we want to make sure God knows, hey, we're crying out to you. It's not, hey, God, here's what I want from you. It's just like, no, God, here, here, here's what I'm feeling and here's what I'm sensing and here's what I'm asking. It's your will to be done in my life. You've got to, have, you've got to start with prayer. Prayer, prayer write, write this down. Prayer is about positioning yourself in the right location under the right authority. So if you're gonna prepare the way and you're gonna pray correctly, make sure you position yourself the proper place which is at the feet of Jesus, meaning that you know, you're, you're, you're praying him, you're praying to him to do something that you can't do, you're asking him to make a way where there is no way, uh, you're asking him to get involved into a situation, maybe you're in a valley or a tight spot and I mean, you are positioning yourself that says, God, whether you do or whether you don't, you are still good. Prayer, 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 prayer. Number two is evangelism. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a little acronym called PREP, P-R-E-P, because I don't got time to do preparation. PREP, evangelism, evangelism. What, what's evan- it's a fancy word for just sharing your faith. It's a fancy word for, for, for sharing your, your faith. In, in, other words, in other words, like every place you go, like the coffee cup experience, great example. Great example on the coffee cup. That, 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 that invite card was, was, was the reason somebody's in church today. It's evangelism. Inviting somebody to church this Wednesday or Thursday is evangelism. Uh, having a nice gesture and, and, and just doing something nice for somebody, that, that's called evangelism. What is evangelism? It's spreading the good news of the gospel. It's, spre- it's spreading the hope of Jesus Christ. It's, it's spreading uh, what God did for you, God can do uh, uh, for, for, some, for somebody else. That, that, that's what, that's what evan- evangelism is. How about this letter? I think I skipped R, but let's go to P. P, praise. Like you prepare the way for Jesus to come in your life through praise. Like I don't know about you, but I, I, I love to praise my king. Like I love to worship my king. Why, why is praise so important to you, Pastor? Why are you, why are you, so, why are you so on praise and worship all the time? Because praise is what, is what your heart acknowledges how great God is. Like, has God been good to you? Then give him good praise. Has God been, has, has God been great to you? Then give him great praise. But if God's been unbelievable, if God's been awesome, if he's been crazy, then we should give him good praise back. Like, I want to have a church that is passionately excited about praising God. Not because we need just to be loud to be loud. No, I want to have a church and a people who understands their place in in this whole scheme of what we're called to do, called the church. In other words, we want to praise God for how big he is in our life and what he's done in my life. I want to have a church that my kids want to come to. I want to have a church where when lost people come in, they think, what? in the world is going on in this room. I've never seen people sing this loud. I've never seen this many people excited. I've never seen so many people clap. I've never seen so many people raise their hand. What is going on inside this room? I'll tell you what it is. It's a people who are understanding just how great God is, just how powerful God is, and just what God holds. It's this attitude of praise Well, I believe you can praise your way into a miracle. I believe you can praise your way into breakthrough. I believe you can praise your way into a blessing. I believe you can praise your way in to God doing something radical in your life. You can sit there and do nothing, or you can choose to praise your way in. Like, I I choose not to do nothing. I I, I choose to praise my way. Like, I wake up every every day, and I want to enter, the Bible says, enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. One place that God is an optional, what he wants from you, whether your preferences or not. Well, the music's too loud. Who gives a rip about the music? We could be Church of Christ and not use any instruments. How weird would that be? We really know how many bad singers we have. <laughs> but when we get that, that drum beat, it just kind of mutes out my voice, right? Chill. Church of Christ people are good. Relax. Our job is to prepare the way. Like our job, your job this week, prepare the way. In your heart, even now, the keyboard can come. I saw you back there for eight minutes, Alex. Come on out. (laughs) 
Our job this week is to prepare the way. Prepare the way for what? For somebody you know that doesn't know Jesus. That's what your assignment is. Prepare the way. What do you mean prepare the way? I mean, get a handful of invite cards and go hand them out this week. Don't be the crazy Christian. Don't be the crazy guy. No, no, just, just be, be invited. Hey, God, this, God, we've been going to this great church, man. Like, I'm not perfect. We're, we're full of imperfect people, but I would love to have you come spend Christmas with us. We're going to have milk and cookies after the service. It's going to be amazing. Like, come with us. It's going to be awesome. Just an invite. For, I mean, just come and be a part. If you don't like it, fine, but I really think, feel like you'd like it. I feel like it'd be a blessing to you. Your family, they're in, they're, in from, they're in on a holiday break. Hey, why don't you come to church with me on Wednesday and Thursday? We got Sunday off. We're going we're gonna to open up presents, and we're going to spend all day Sunday putting batteries in things that Santa Claus brought, and it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. I'd rather be preaching, but I'm going to be putting stuff together. <laughs> but I want you to think about this. If each one of you took an assignment to prepare the way for somebody else, what does our church look like in four weeks? Because I don't know about you, but one day somebody prepared for you to come. And that's why you're here. Somebody prepared for me to come. And that's why I'm here. Let's not be a people that write people off. Let's be known as the church that writes people in. We're not a church that writes people off. I'm a pastor who writes people in. I'm a pastor who pulls up a seat at the table and wants to have a conversation. I'm, I'm a pastor that wants to write, I want to write them in. Jesus wants to write them in. Come on, God's grace is too big for you and I to have a little judgment in our life. Let's just get them to Jesus. Let's get them to the feet of God and let him figure it out. You and I, let's get busy inviting. Let's get busy loving. Let's get busy embracing those people that society has wrote off. Jesus will write them in. Are you with me, church? Our assignment this week is to prepare the way. This Wednesday and Thursday, let's, let's, let's have this whole place packed, both services. So packed, we got people in the lobby. Preparing the way. Prepare the way. Why does it matter? Because people's hearts are more turned to God during Christmas season than any other season that we go through. Why do you want full room? Because I want heaven to be full. Why do you want people to come? Because I read the newspaper in our city. We're jacked up in this area. I see... I, why, do you, why, why is it so important that we keep growing? Because if we're not growing, we're dying. And if God did it for you and God did it for me, then how many people know God can do it for somebody else? Amen?